movie, baby, yeah. <laughs> Hey there, gorgeous! Sabrina here. Welcome back to another historically accurate makeup tutorial. Today we're focusing on the 1970s, specifically Farrah Fawcett's Au Naturel style. And in the last historically accurate video, I asked many of you what era you wanted me to go back to in the next video, and a majority of you had a resounding request for the 70s. So, here we are! As with all my historically accurate tutorials, I'm going to give you a little bit of background information on this era and what was going on during the time period that helped to shape makeup. And if you don't want to hear this background information, you want to skip straight to the tutorial, no problem, babe. Go ahead and skip ahead to this number right here. Political and economic freedoms advanced dramatically for women in the 70s, and there was an explosion of second wave feminism seen in this era as well. Now, some of the things that helped shape this were that Switzerland gave women voting rights for the first time in 1971, the U.S. passed legislation that banned sex discrimination in employment, women were allowed on the floor of the London Stock Exchange for the very first time in history, and in 1979, Britain saw their first female prime minister, Margaret Thatcher. So you may be saying by now, what does all this have to do with makeup? Well, if you've watched my past historically accurate videos, then you already know that the socio-political climate has a heavy influence on advertising, and this directly affects the cosmetic industry. And companies of this time wanted to appeal to the newly liberated female. Beauty icons of the time include Lauren Hutton, Stevie Nicks, Cher, Diana Ross, Barbara Summers, and the incomparable Farrah Fawcett, who today's look is modeled after. Strikingly bright eyeshadows were popular as well as sunbathing. Disco music was in and it had the shimmery glossy makeup to go right along with it. So let's go ahead and shake our groove thing and head on back to the 70s. Yeah, baby, yeah. <laughs> In the 1970s, needless to say, having a suntan was in. The healthy glow was associated with leisure time and beach holidays, and models like Farrah Fawcett made it look absolutely irresistible. In order to get that healthy glow, I'm going to be mixing in my self-tanner with my face moisturizer. So I'm using the Victoria's Secret self-tanner and my Shiseido face moisturizer. And the way that I'm doing this is obviously I'm wearing gloves to protect my hands so I don't get any stains. And I'm mixing in the moisturizer and the self tanner together and applying them onto my face and my neck. I'm also going to apply a little bit of this to my chest. And I like this self tanner because it's really light and it's streak free. You absolutely cannot mess up with this one and you can't go too dark with it either. Especially with mixing it in like a moisturizer, this will also help to keep it really light on the face and the neck. On to the eyes. We're applying an eye primer here. I'm using the Milani one. And the eyeshadows I'll be using in today's look are from left to right here, MAC Shroom and MAC Bamboo. We're going to start out with Bamboo and apply this lightly into the crease. Now there were three main eye looks that you see within the 70s. There was the natural, barely there, very light look. There was the soft and smoky look, or you can go bold and garish. So there are three different ways to wear your eyeshadow in the 70s, but we're gonna stick with the natural, barely there look today. Popular eyeshadow colors include blues, greens, and purples. Earthy tones were also extremely popular. Next, I'm going to take a matte shade that matches my skin tone, and I'm going to use that to blend out the harsher edges of the creased shade. I'm using Max Blanc Type here. Then I'm going to take Max Kid Eyeshadow and lightly layer this over bamboo. All this does is helps to take away some of the orange in bamboo and neutralize it a little bit more. Bringing it back to those earthy tones. For the lid in this look, we're going to be applying Shroom, and this is a dirty white eyeshadow. That's the best way to really describe it. It is shimmery, so it goes perfectly with this look. The types of finishes that you could find in eyeshadows from the 70s were matte, or they could also have an iridescent or pearlescent sheen to them, very shimmery. These were known more so as frost or velvet finishes at the time. 
Eyeshadows came in formulas like pressed powder, liquids, and creams. There was also something called eye crayons, which actually looked like crayons, as you can see here. This is where you start to see white, silver, or similar pale colors used as a highlight under the brow bone. So that's what we're going to be doing with Shroom here also. We're going to apply a little bit of this underneath the brow bone to add that shimmery highlight. And I really want to neutralize that crease shade, so I'm going to go over the crease color a little bit with more of Max Blanc type to help sheer out the color. And then I'm going to go back with a little bit more shroom and layer that into the crease as well to give the whole look a little bit more of a shimmery texture. Now the eye crease that was so sharply defined in the 60s did transfer somewhat into some of the 70s makeup, but it was now being more blended and a lot more natural looking rather than being that real sharp line that it was in the 60s. For our eyeliner, I'm using Max Teddy. This is a simple brown eyeliner and I'm going to be lining only the outer half of the upper lash line. So not the inner half of the lid, just the outer half. And this is going to help to open up the eyes and keep the look very subdued and natural looking. Then with a small smudging brush, I'm going to smudge this line into the lash line so that it's barely there and it becomes more of a smoky shadow. Eyeliner came in pencil and liquid forms with an applicator and it was really popular in colors like black, blue, green, gray, burgundy, and especially brown. I'm also going to take a little bit of shroom eyeshadow and layer it lightly over that line to help it to fade. You don't need too much of shroom eyeshadow to do this. A little bit goes a long way. I'm also going to apply a little bit of this pencil onto the lower lash line. I'm using the pencil to apply tiny dots and then I'm going to smudge them together and you can see that I didn't apply much at all. It's hardly detectable and that's the exact look that you want. For my brows, I'm using the MAC 263 brush and Laura Mercier's Brow Defining Gel in Fair. There are two different ways that you can wear your eyebrows based on my findings. The first is to just keep them natural. If they're bushy, have them trimmed and leave them natural. Don't fill them in. The other way that they were done was they were kept on the thinner side. And that's why I'm choosing to do them thin here is because mine are very naturally thin. And they would place them in more of a curve very reminiscent of the Art Deco skinny brow as seen on Liza Minnelli and Cabaret. Next, I'm going to take some time to curl the lashes. Just like eyeliner, mascara came in many different colors as well. There was black, brown, blue, green, and gray. There were also brighter colors that were made, like turquoise, raspberry, and lavender. Mascara was usually applied on the upper and lower lashes. It would be either applied very liberally and deliberately, or barely there at all. And because my lashes are so sparse, I want something more than just this. So I'm not gonna be applying full strip lashes because false eyelashes were still worn in the 70s, but the big fashion for full strip lashes was really left more so in the 60s. So I want something that's a little bit lighter in this look. Dun, 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 dun. We're gonna choose to go with individual lashes. So the way that I do this is I take a little bit of duo adhesive, put a dollop on the back of my hand, and then I pick up the individual lashes with tweezers, dip them into the glue on my hand, let them set for just maybe two or three seconds, and then I apply them onto my natural lashes. You don't need to do this step. You can absolutely skip it. This is just something that I've chosen to add into the look so that my eyes look a little bit more awake. If you do try this, make sure that the lashes adhere to your own natural lashes. You want to keep them from touching the skin on your eyelid. They should not be touching the skin at all. This does take a little bit of practice, but this is actually a little bit easier than applying full strip lashes. A little bit more time consuming, but you can see that the result is so much more natural looking. The glue will dry clear and you won't have any indication of a band. It just looks like your own natural lashes. For my face, I'm choosing to go with Dr. Jart's BB Cream. And the reason that I chose this is because it's very light, has just a hint of color. It's not heavy by any means whatsoever. It's perfect for a look like this because in the 70s, they weren't really big on piling on the foundation. It was kept very light dewy and natural. And I'm going to lightly set the face with a tiny amount of powder. That's why I'm using such a big brush here. I don't want too much powder because I want to keep the look still very fresh and dewy. But I don't want my face sliding off either. 
And to give the illusion of that healthy glow from the 70s, I'm going to be adding in a bronzer from Rimmel. Using that same big fluffy brush, I'm going to apply this loosely onto my face as well as my neck. And this gives a slight amount of color without being too much and making me look too dark. During the 70s, reports started reaching the media about the harmful effects of sunbathing. And the beauty industry actually responded by producing cosmetic substitutes that looked like a tan, which is why we're using a bronzer today so that we can avoid all that nasty sun damage. My blush is Max Azalea in the Afternoon. This is a mineralized blush, a light shimmery pink. Blush was quite natural in application and color, but towards the mid 70s and later 70s, you start to see blush become a lot more prominent and it ended up being as defined stripes on the cheeks that went literally all the way to the temples. And this was one of the trends that did get carried over into the 80s. I'm going to go back with a little bit more shroom eyeshadow and I'm using this as a highlight on the tops of the cheeks. I'm also going to be using this on the bridge of the nose and this adds to that healthy bronzed beachy glow. For my lips, I'm going to be mixing together Max Creme de Nude and Shy Girl. Lip colors in the 70s consisted of pastels. Peaches and pinks were also very popular with the natural look. Red lips actually made quite a comeback and it was a way to honor the glamour and sophistication of the 40s and 50s. There were also really deep fruit colors like plums, mulberry, and cranberry that were really popular in the early 70s. Lips were not heavily lined with pencil, if at all, and if pencil was used on the lips, the pencil lines were never visible. They were always blended in really well. And to finish the lips in this look, I'm going to add in a lip gloss from Jordana. Lipsticks with gloss and sheen were really fashionable, and there was a lot of experimentation happening in the 70s with flavored lip products. This got a little bit of a lukewarm reception. They weren't as highly accepted as they are today. today and let me know where you would like the time machine to travel to next. If you're interested in any of the past videos I have done in this series, I will list every single one of them down for you below the video. The only ones we have not visited yet are the 30s and the 50s, so you let me know where you want to go. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. Woo-wee! This wig is hot! Are you looking for new ways to wear your eyeshadows? Discover the only website online with pictures of combinations using the eyeshadows featured in today's look and so many more. Head on over to MyEyeshadowConsultant.com and get inspired today.